Moving on, um, the energy modeling and scenarios for um, decarbonization of a uh, local authority. Uh, all right. Again, uh, first slide is why it's important. Uh, so this, this uh, whole process is firstly to create a baseline. This is the first step in order to be able to compare uh, your progress and you have to have a state uh, fixed baseline. Uh, so this is um, what I'm gonna show how we created our own baseline in Cyprus. Then um, based on that, you can select the appropriate actions and uh, what's most fitting about um, uh, to get the path on the pathway that you want to meet the targets. So um, this is why it's important to also, um, other than the modeling, you need the scenarios, the second part, uh, which is also gonna be included in this presentation. Um, and then monitoring and adapting the actions that are happening in order to reach your final goal. Uh, yeah, so for that you need also both the, um, the modeling part, the baseline that you need, and the scenarios for what's happening in the future. Because nobody knows that, so we need to set some parameters to calculate. Starting off with the energy modeling, uh, what you need to do, uh, each, each example, each municipality, each uh, organization will have a different set of data to work with. Um, maybe it's not perfect, but you can make it work. You need to have in mind, to keep in mind, some basic um, ideas and uh, guidelines as to how to um, make sure your data is at least at the same level of accuracy or consistency. Uh, Harris will explain more about how to make sure of, about this, but just in general, you need to know that you have maybe two approaches, the bottom up and the top down. So a top down would be if you have uh, data given at the, uh, at the level that you want, or if you don't have it, you can go bottom up and collect some data from um, some emp empirical or um, you know, um, with questionnaires and these kinds of tools. And the types of data can also be hard data, um, statistics, soft measures, and some uh, soft data and some measurements that you uh, might need to do. Uh, and in our uh, case in Cyprus, we use a mixture of all those. So you can also do that if it's not possible, which is gonna be the case for most of you. So what information will you need in order to set your baseline? Um, when you're talking about um, sustainable energy climate action plans and using the covenant of mayors methodology, but also other types of um, methodologies um, such as, for example, the greenhouse gas protocol or some NECP method methodologies, you need to identify the sources of emission of different greenhouse gases. So depending on where you set the boundaries, it could be simple, simply the uh, CO2 emissions or it could be CO2 equivalent. So you need to identify this. Um, you also need to find the quantities uh, emitted in each uh, of the process. So first find the sources and find how much is emitted from each source. You need to have some specific emission factors. So for example, we have in Cyprus the emission factor for electricity, since it's um, based on fossil fuels mostly, it's zero point um, 784, something like that, uh, tons of CO2 per um, megawatt hour. So you need to have these factors in order to have a, a common um, a, a common um, unit of measurement for all of them. And then you also need some population and demographic data um, which will help you uh, and that will depend on how you want to 
uh, approach the decarbonization process. In the Covenant of Mayors, you have the option to do this uh, goal setting based on per capita emissions or an absolute uh, reduction in emissions. So for example, if you are living in a growing city, um, you know that if you do absolute emissions, it's most probable that uh, they will grow without any action anyway, because you have more people, so you have more needs, you have more emissions. Uh, you could do um, take the approach of per capita emissions in order to um, avoid this issue. But it could be the opposite as well. If you are trying to decarbonize a village that is reducing in numbers, maybe you want to have this impact. So uh, if you didn't have per capita and you only used uh, absolute emissions, maybe you would meet your goal without even doing any actions because of the urbanization process and the fact that people are living from villages in some cases. So maybe you want to use the per capita uh, the per capita option in order to make sure that your actions have impact uh, indeed. So these are some considerations on how you would approach your uh, baseline. Uh, now, for, um, for the SECAP, um, and uh, there are different scopes and different indicators for each one of them on where you get the emissions. So you will need information under the energy structure and the emissions scope. So, so for example, where does your energy come from in the city? It could be, um, it could be electricity from the national grid. It could be um, boilers in houses. It could be uh, district heating. It could be different sources. You need to identify the sources um, and find the energy consumption. And then for each one of these sources, you need to find the emission factor. Then you have renewable energy is another scope you need to look. Uh, you look into the existing facilities, the production, but also the trends for further renewable energy sources. Um, there is a limit in the, in the methodology for SECAPs. There is a limit in the scale of renewable energy plants and also fossil fuel plants um, that can be accounted for in a municipality. So for example, if I'm looking at the municipality in Cyprus that has the biggest power plant in the whole of Cyprus, um, which is powering the majority of Cypriot households, I'm not going to count that in the emissions of the city. Uh, at the same scale, if I have a huge solar park or a, um, a wind farm in a, the boundaries of a municipality that accounts, I think the percentage is 20% of the um, needs, um, then I'm not going to count those, those gains, let's say, in the reduction of emission in the municipality. Um, moving on, energy consumption and management in local administration. So we need to look at the buildings and equipment of the municipality itself. So the, the buildings of the municipality, the fleet of the municipality, uh, um, and uh, what is the uh, change in, in, in energy consumption and emissions uh, for each energy carrier. Uh, then you have the municipal fleet, as I said, um, that can be both uh, in of the municipality in, in the boundaries, and it could be also uh, in terms of transportation in general, it could be anything that happened within the city boundaries. This is a quite difficult one to get because to have accurate data, you need to literally count cars that go in uh, the municipality and you need to have sensors for that. So if not, you have to make some assumptions. And then the built in terms of buildings, you need to know the typology of existing building stock. At least it would be good to have that as an average. So I'm looking at Cyprus. I know that the typology is that most buildings were built between um, before 2007, 1970s, 80s, until 2007. Between that period, I had no en energy efficiency legislation. 
So that means that most buildings have no um, insulation. Uh, this is important to know for the actions, but also to understand why the level of consumption is that that it is. Okay. Okay, next we have the energy database for Cyprus. Uh, what we did to have the database that we have is that, as I said before, we combine different levels and types of data. The basis is the data for electricity. Um, in Cyprus, we have one, one um, nationalized companies for electricity. So what we did when we're starting this process to create the baseline is that we uh, signed a referendum of cooperation and that's not referendum, uh, uh, memorandums, I'm sorry, uh, of understanding of cooperation with the um, Electricity Authority of Cyprus that we will receive the data of electric electricity consumption per uh, by postcode, per po postcode for the whole of the area under the control of the Republic of Cyprus. So we have this as a baseline, uh, as a base to build on the whole database. The energy database, energy includes all types of energy, is the umbrella that under it we have the electricity database. The electricity is accurate to the last kilowatt hour. And let's say because it comes from the mid test from each installation. Uh, to build on the electricity database uh, the rest of the energy sources, we used statistics that we found uh, from the National Statistics Agency or some uh, uh, local research that we did. So um, at the right side, you see that um, the pie chart is the percentage of consumption of energy in uh, residential buildings by um, source of energy. And this is again the national statistics. So from here I can find that um, electricity is 43%, which I know exactly the number, and then um, heating oil and uh, gas and solar energy and biomass, I know which percentage is which. So I know using these statistics and also using the total um, let's say diesel uh, or heating oil uh, um, amount bought each year, I have this as well. I combine the two and I find the actual um, heating oil used in households in Cyprus for that period. Another layer, let's say, to these calculations is the different climatic zones. We have four in Cyprus, so that means I don't need as much heating oil or biomass in the coast as I need in the mountains. So then I get a weighted average for each of these um, type of fuels based on the location. For the biomass specifically, um, we have done, Harris was responsible for that uh, back in the day, is some, um, some research, door-to-door -door research about biomass use in uh, the mountainous area of Troodos and Cyprus. So you see that we get different sources of data to build on this. Um, and so this is how it's done uh, in terms of the energy database, based on some uh, data, hard data, on statistics, on measurements we've done, and some assumptions. Um, a large percentage of the assumption that goes in is about transport. In transport, we have some data about the diesel and gasoline bought um, each year in, in Cyprus. And then we have uh, some averages based on weighted averages based on population in each municipality. It's not 100% accurate, but it's the closest we could get at this point uh, with the available data since there are no national um, meters or sensors that could count uh, the actual um, cars and vehicles passing through a municipality. Okay, somewhat uh, This is the database that we built. I'm going to stop the presentation and go into the actual Excel to show you how we do it. 
Just give me a minute. Do you see the, um, the Excel sheet? Yes, Mr. All right. So it looks busy and complicated. I will zoom in a bit. Um, oh, that's a lot. As you can see, um, because we have electricity by postcode, per code, postcode, we can group the raw data in each municipality because we, we know what postcode falls within what municipality. So what we created here is a list of all the municipalities in Cyprus. And by choosing one of them, I can look exactly what the electricity consumption is within that uh, municipality. So let's choose the like Adamia, one that we did, as Harry said. And the data changes, as you see, to get the local statistics. Uh, I also uh, can show here that we have different units of measurement um, that can be used. And it's a tricky part to make sure that you have uh, the same uh, units when calculating the emissions. All right, so the first part we have is the national statistics. From the national statistics, we get some, uh, we do some calculations to get some weighted averages for the use of, for example, as I said, heating diesel and gasoline, LPG, kerosene, agricultural diesel, all these uh, in each location. So I know from these statistics, from the pure statistics, what happened each year. Then we have some local statistics, uh, population based on census and some projection, but also we have uh, some information about the type of buildings and the economic activities that happen. Again, because the electricity authority of Cyprus uh, groups uh, each meter of the electricity authority of Cyprus is linked to a postcode and an ACE code. We have also uh, the statistics for the economic activities happening. So moving on down, this is the main table that we create. We have the local electricity consumption, and you can see that we have them in each sector for each year. So have the residential sector, which is broken down to residential and the storage heaters. The Cyprus, they have different meters. We have the primary sector, which is uh, divided to agriculture and mining. Uh, secondary sector, manufacturing, uh, electricity and gas supply, water supply, storage, and construction. Uh, tertiary sector, the different types of and businesses and so on. And, um, and it includes here the public administration. And finally, we have public lighting. What that does uh, is that it helps us know where most emissions are. So it, help us, it helps us know where we need to focus when putting the actions. So as I said, this is the local electricity consumption. So the next step is to add onto this the information about other energy sources. So we have the local energy balances in tons of oil equivalent, or I can change this and have this in megawatt hours or kilowatt hours. And for each one of these, as you see, is the electricity, and then we have heating diesel, kerosene, LPG, natural gas, biomass, charcoal, solar, which in this case, solar is solar thermal. And I will explain this in a bit. Um, diesel, gasoline, and so on, and the total. And it goes all the way up to 2020, I think, we have so far. So again, this is the, we had the local electricity balances. Now we have the local energy balances. What's next is calculating the CO2 emissions. So for each one of these type of fuel, we have the emission factor, as I explained before. So we calculate the total with this emission factor to get the CO2 emissions in 
um, in tones. And then, uh, we have this, okay, this is uh, for uh, another layer, what we add. Here we go. We add the local electricity production from renewable energy sources. So this is also important um, part of the emissions. So what we really have is solar um, and um, solar thermal and solar PV. And sometimes in some municipalities, we also have biomass. And then we have them broken down. So in Larnaca, they don't have wind power. They have photovoltaic. The solar thermal we get from above because it's at the residential level. And uh, we have the totals. So what I'm explaining here is we have two types of res, of renewable energy sources. We have the the level, the higher level, that's let's say a solar farm, a wind farm, a biogas, a, you know, processing a, a facility. And we have in here in the different sectors, we have some biomass and solar thermal that is put in place. So we have two levels of renewables to get the total. All right. So in kilowatt hours, in tons of oil equivalent. And then we have the summary tables in each type of uh, uh, use. Let's say we have the total uh, energy in oil, uh, tons of oil equivalent. Also transport, as you can see, transport is added in the total energy balances because it's not part of the electricity at the moment. And then we have them per fuel, the totals. And then we have both of them in total for CO2 um, emissions, CO2 equivalent. Using all this information, we are able to make some tables and see the progress. So here, automatically I get how much um, energy has been used in the municipality, we can say, see a reduction and mainly a drop in 2013 because of the economic crisis and, and then another small drop in 2020 because of COVID. Uh, and this is seen in, by um, type of uh, sector, by type of fuel, by NACE code. In, this is the this is a graph that shows the emissions in 2019 and 2009. So it compares. So transport, for example, has increased sale of transport. I'm sure. I'm sorry, the emissions from sale of transport uh, and um, repairing has increased has almost doubled in Lagadami. So that's important. Also, residential sector has increased because mainly of a, an increase in population in Lagadami. So we can see all these trends here. Um, also, final energy consumption, how it changed. Here we see transport has reduced actually a bit. And tertiary has increased. Uh, yeah. And then we have electricity production from renewables. The like Academia only has uh, PV, no wind power or biogas. So we see how it increased. Um, and then we get some averages, average household uh, electricity consumption, average household emissions, share of renewables. So we can track the progress here at the bottom. It's important to know, I'm not sure if you understand exactly the structure, but it's important to know um, that we combine the different types of data to get this uh, information at the end. And as you can see at the bottom, we have many more um, uh, tabs that we get raw data and analyze data. So for example, domestic electricity, we get the raw data, tons and tons of raw data. And then we calculate the annual electricity consumption, the annual 
storage history consumption, number of consumer. We draw this data from here to the, to the first tab. And we also have some national statistics, for example, fuel statistic, uh, sales of fuels in 2010, for example, and shows by type of fuel and where it was sold. So these I can break down into the first tab again to see how much. Have national population statistics and many more that are hidden. Um, but this is all building up this first page. All right, uh, this is the this is how the, the database works. I can move on with the presentation and show you how we do the I'll keep this here because I will be needed for the scenarios. But let me get back to the presentation to show you how it's done. We do have also two questions, but maybe you can finish and after uh, give the, the answer. I can see them when I'm presenting. Um, yeah, the can answer in a bit. Let me finish the scenario. Okay. Okay, so scenarios. Now we're talking about, we have our baseline. We need to know we know where we're going to get. We got that from the vision. And we need to know how um, the world will work around our actions at the same time as time progresses. Why do we need the scenarios? So here I have an example in Cyprus again. But this is what would, it would look like uh, in any location. I know from past data, I know the exact CO2 emissions in a location. Okay, so from 2009, this is the baseline we use specifically by code BNT until 20, 2018, let's say, of 2020. I know the exact uh, emissions. And then I know my goal. My goal is 55% reduction in emissions compared to 2009. So this is a simple calculation. It's for uh, the total, let's say, uh, emissions minus 55% of the emissions to get there. This is the number I want to achieve. And there's nothing more to it. Okay? So if I take this line at the same level, I take this line to 2030, I know that in 2030, my graph needs to end up in this red point. Why do I care about the scenarios? Because from 2020 or 2018 here, up to 2030, if I do nothing, the business as usual scenario and the world events and the national events scenario can take me to any of these three or any of these infinite number of um, emissions. And why do I care? Because if I end up in this scenario with business as usual, it means that I need to put enough actions to reduce the emissions from here only to here. While if, I don't know, um, something happens and our emissions skyrocket and they're here, I need to make sure I put enough actions to reduce the emissions from here to here, almost double. The range could be infinite, as I said. So we need to make the scenarios. It's not going to be 100% accurate. We know that. And we've, we've experienced this from the previous decade, 2010, 2020. We had the economic crisis. We had, the, we had an explosion in the uh, power plant in Cyprus. We had um, other world events we couldn't take into account. And the, and the scenario, this graph that you see, it's not only because of the, um, the actions that the municipality took, it's also because of other external factors. So we need to make sure to put this down. Moving on. What affects these scenarios is national actions. As you know, we have the NCPs now, 
we have uh, other EU strategies that will or will not <laughs> uh, reduce the emissions at the national level. Uh, I said will or will not because, for example, here I have the NCP, the first NCP for Cyprus. The green, the green line is the goal. The green bars is the goal. So. The initial planning was that we will reduce the emissions enough in 2021 to go below what was actually required from us. And then by 2030, we will almost meet the target, but not meet the target. 2021 has passed and the jury is in, and we have actually higher emissions. So the government did not manage to achieve what they said. Uh, so we take this with a grain of salt, let's say. Um, but this is important because I will explain this later, actually. Uh, what else we care about? Growth projections. We need to know the growth um, in economic sectors, but also the growth in population, which, which is sort of the development projection. Cities are growing in our location. Villages are abandoned. So this is important in the calculations. Sector projections. In Cyprus, for example, the service sector has increased a lot in the past years, while agriculture or manufacturing have reduced. So I need to know this because we know the emissions per sector. So if I have a municipality that is mainly, uh, let's say now, based in manufacturing, but a lot of the industries are closing down and replaced with forex companies, also happening in some locations in Cyprus, that means I need to make sure that I take this into account in the future emissions in the business as usual scenario. Uh, also, finally, uh, plans for change in use of land. This has to do with the LULUCF, land use, land use change, and forestry. Extremely important when we're talking about sequestration. Uh, a bit debated, I know, but for the case that we're talking today, I, we have, for example, in Cyprus, a, the, the local plans, which is a policy on how the zones for development are designed. So if I have now, which is also happening in some municipalities that are more urban, a huge chunk of land that is agricultural or river is left wild, so it has some vegetation and trees, if it's written down that this is a development area for residential, I know that in 2030, either we change this policy or this policy will bring more and more people building there and cutting down trees and instead uh, putting there people that will consume more energy. So I need to know this change in use. Uh, it's very hard topic also to debate with municipalities because municipalities want to have people in to keep active, so want to grow. And most times they want to take away from other uses to have residential use instead. This is what we've seen, at least in our case. Important to know for the scenarios. Uh, so what we do is some um, calculations also using um, some national statistics. So for example, the first graph on the top, you see is the forecast of final electricity demand in Cyprus. Uh, this is some calculations at the national level. So you see that we expect to have an increase uh, regardless of whether we have more planned policies and measures for reduction of, uh, of demand. So we put this into account. And uh, what we also did in the past design phase um, is that we had different to make simplify a little bit the process, we have different typologies of municipalities. So we have touristic developed. So something like um, Aia Napa is an area that has been touristic for decades. So we know that it's already developed as a tourist area and can't be much developed. Uh, so touristic growing is an area that wasn't as developed, but now is able to develop more. This is the example I'm showing here, for example. So I put growth percentages. We put growth percentages based on some research in each one of the sectors um, that reflect 
this uh, situation. So especially accommodation and food services, you see the highest 4% increase. Uh, also rest because it's Cyprus is easy to increase, but something like um, electricity and gas um, is or mining and coring is almost no growth. Some of them are uh, minus, not in this case, but in other cases. Uh, also urban developed or urban growing is two other groups, um, peri-urban developed and peri-urban growing, and village and so on. So we made these typologies based on what is available in, I don't know, in Cyprus. And uh, we put these growth factors in. Uh, this is not the whole story though, because we need to make sure that we avoid double counting as well. This is my last slide and then we can answer some questions. Um, other than the growth rates that, well, unfortunately I have to say, uh, is a very old fashioned model of growth that we are following. Um, there are some actions for the opposite in Cyprus, which is the NECP, for example, or other such uh, policies that will reduce emissions, uh, not because of actions that the municipality took, but because of other actions at the national and EU level. So we need to avoid that double counting in that sense, because if I put down in the scenario, uh, an assumption that emissions in transport will reduce because we had a change in the national public transport uh, policy. And then I put the same actions in the calculations for the local level because the local level will be affected. Then I will be double counting this reduction. And then I won't reach my goal. This is often complicated because it is an issue of authority. Again, uh, example in Cyprus is the transport. Depending on the type of road, it's different authority. It could be national or uh, regional or local. And that means that in order to avoid double counting, I need to make sure that I will not count it in, in the national projections and in the local actions as well. So you need to clarify with the local authorities what they can do and what they will do if we put them down. It's, it's not possible to put down actions for the local authority that the local authority cannot uh, implement themselves or implement partly themselves. Uh, so yes, co communication with the competent authorities for each of these is important uh, to make sure that uh, we don't make unrealistic projections either for uh, the good stuff and the bad stuff. And I think that's all for me. Thank you, Mito. I mean, it's uh, very important to see, to share our, our experience in the baseline, baseline emission inventory. It's not an easy task. Um, we have two questions. The first from Martin, how you find uh, data regarding statistics of use and assumptions based on observation? And we have a second question from Fiorentino. How do you gather local data on electricity and energy? Which are the, are the sources? Uh, I think the second question uh, uh, will be answered through the presentation later, but we can, you can give your feedback if you want return it. Yeah, I mean, I to, especially for electricity, it's the, the whole basis of our, our work, how we did it, is that we have through the Electricity Authority of Cyprus, we have data at the, at the scale, at the level of postcode. For each postcode in Cyprus, we know exactly how much energy was consumed. So at the local, uh, local um, municipality level, I can put which postcode falls within and I can find the exact electricity consumption. So this is a very easy answer. So then we have some statistics of usage um, based on national statistics that use, for example, through the census, uh, some of the questions that are asked and some of the questions that the um, data that they gather is how much electricity or how much 
energy in general goes to a heating and cooling, a lighting, appliances in each household. And I, a lot of this data can be found at Eurostat as well, because it's uh, part of the reporting in Eurostat and UNFCCC, they need to do it. I don't want to take too much of Harris's presentation, but uh, basically this is how we do it. Again, with the other types of fuels, we get the national statistics of, of um, sales of types of fuels each year. And then we know based on some weighted average because you know a, a size of the a municipality or some if it's coastal or uh, mountainous, they will need more heating, uh, heating fuel, fuel or cooling fuel uh, um, in each in each case. So we weight the we, with the weighted average, we get the the this is the assumption that we do that we get the total energy use. I don't know if that answers. Thank you. Yeah, just also to add in the next presentation, we have created a table with the different sources that uh, you can use. And also in the case that uh, you lack accurate data, uh, how to increase your accuracy and reliability of the data, uh, we will see in the next uh, presentation. Uh, in the case that you need to go on site or create a questionnaire, etc., uh, based on observation. 